Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and congratulations on your decision to learn React. It's a JavaScript library for building user interfaces, and this can be one of the most profitable decisions you could make as a JavaScript developer, at least in today's economy. And if we look just a little bit closer at React, some Wikipedia information here, it is maintained by Facebook and a community of developers and companies. It's very popular right now, and it was initially released in May of 2013. Also, the website for React is reactjs.org, and that's where I begin the tutorial at, right here. There's documentation here for React, just like we would find on MDN for vanilla JavaScript. Now, I mentioned a profitable decision. If we look at the jobs listed for React in the Kansas City area, which is the area that I live in, as of today, there's 208 plus React jobs listed. Now, there may be a few that slipped in there that just have the word React in the listing. However, if we look at the salaries, we can tell most of these jobs are truly for working with React.js. And at the high end, we can tell there's 92 or more that offer 130,000 plus for the position. And you can see the other listings as well. To get started with React today, we're going to need to make sure you have Node.js installed. And if you go to nodejs.org, it will identify what platform you're on. I'm on Windows, and it knows that already. And then it will offer the appropriate download. Likewise, you can install Node.js on Mac and Linux. After you do that, we will come back at the command line, and I will show you how to check the version. But you may also want to go to store.chrome.web and there you can search for React Dev Tools, and I recommend installing the React Developers Tools extension. I believe it's available in some variation for Firefox and for Safari. However, I know it's available for Chrome, so you may want to install this extension as well. Now today, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, and this is Visual Studio Code opened up to an empty folder, which is what you'll want to do. Maybe start a React Projects folder. I've got mine under React Series. And when we install or create an app with React, it will create the project folder for us. So we just want to have a parent folder where we can have all of our projects. Now in Visual Studio Code, I can press Control and the tilde to open up a terminal window, and this is my terminal window. So now let's check what version of Node you have. If you've installed Node, we can type node-v and just verify that it's installed, and you can see I have version 14.15.4. From here, we'll create our first React project. So let's type npx, and then we'll type create-react-app. And then we'll type the name of our project. You can name it whatever you want to. I'm just going to name this 01TUT, as in the first tutorial in this series. And I'll go ahead and press Enter. And this process is going to take a few minutes, and so I will come back when it is complete. When Create React App completes, you should see a screen like this, at least if you have your terminal open in VS Code and set it to full screen like I did. You can make it smaller, or if it starts out small at the bottom, you can click this arrow and bring it back up. And there I'm scrolling back to show what it shows in the terminal. But now it is complete, and our full project is in the 01 tut folder, or whatever you named your folder. A couple of quick things before we go to this folder that you may want to do. One is to go to the Extensions tab in Visual Studio Code, and here search for ES7 React, and if you click on that, you'll see an extension that I already have installed and enabled and it's ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets. This gives some useful snippets, and so you may want to enable this in your VS Code as well. Just a recommended extension. I will use it during this tutorial series. After that, I can come back to the file tree here, which just shows the folder, but if I go to the File menu and choose Preferences, and then go to Settings, and now when I can search settings, I'm going to type Emmet. That's E-M-M-E-T. And this will bring up the settings for Emmet and find Emmet include languages. 
and it recommends right here, or at least gives an example of JavaScript and then a value of JavaScript React. So if we want to use Emmet shortcuts, and sometimes I do, although I don't always do that, especially do, during tutorials, I like to type things out. But if you want to use Emmet shortcuts, we'll add the item here and we'll just type the key JavaScript and the value should be JavaScript React. And we'll click OK. And now that is set and we can use Emmet as we write React. Okay, with those complete, I believe we're ready to go into our project folder now. And we can do this in the terminal as well. And so if you have the command line available in your terminal, you can go ahead and just type CD and then type the name of the folder you have. And that is 01 tut for me. And now that I'm in that folder, I really want to just open up Visual Studio Code in that folder. And I can type the word code and a period, and I'll open up a new instance of Visual Studio Code when I press Enter. And now we can close the previous instance, and I will expand this. And we've got Visual Studio Code opened up in the 01 Tut folder. Create React App has created all of the contents you see for us, including the folders and the individual files. Let's start at the top. The first one is the Git folder. So it's already initiated Git. And if you're used to using Git with your project and probably store your source files on GitHub, it's already initialized. And therefore, it already has a Git ignore file. And if you've worked with Node before, you know you need Node modules. It contains all of the dependencies, but you don't want to store all of those files in your repository. So Node modules is included in the git ignore file. And if I click that, we can see it right here under dependencies. And that's why Node modules is a little bit of a different color here in my file tree. It's grayed out. And that doesn't mean it won't work with our project. It will. It's just not included in the Git repository. Besides that, we have a public folder, and we won't do much with the public folder, and that includes the index.html file. And the way React works is there's only the one HTML file that loads into the browser, and after that, React takes over and presents the rest of the content. So you'll only have this one file, and if you need to include some more meta tags or some other resources and you want to do that in the HTML, this is the place that you would do that. Other than that, we won't really do anything in the public folder. We will work in the source folder. So let's expand this, and you can see several files are already included in here, and that includes a few files that we don't need. We won't use the app.test.js. We also won't use the report web vitals, .js or the setup test.js. They just will not be part of something we do with this tutorial. So we can delete those. You can do a right click and choose delete to get rid of those, or you could just press the delete key. With those files deleted, we'll go ahead and leave the source folder open for now. But let's look at the package.json, which you should also be familiar with if you've worked with Node before. But if not, this will be a quick rundown. It's got the project name, the version, it lists the dependencies here, and this is important because this is how Node knows which dependencies to pull in from the Node's module folder. Other than that, it also has scripts, and these are important because we will be running them. And we'll even use this npm start script to show the initial project that Create React App builds for us to start our project with or to modify. When we want to build our project, when we finish writing the source code, we'll use the build script as well. Other than that, there's nothing else really in the package.json file that we will use right now. And then there's a readme that explains some of these scripts and what they do. So our main focus will be here in the source folder. And let's look at the index.js file. It's got a few things in here we can delete because we removed the report web vitals. And you see here on line 17, it says report web vitals. So let's go ahead and highlight all of that and just I'll hit backspace and get rid of it. Also, that means we don't need the report web vitals import up here either. So I can highlight that and also delete that. Now I'll save the file. 
And since create react app initialized a git folder for us, and we've already got git initialized, you can see in the file tree that my index.js changes color and the M stands for modified. And if you're used to working with git, you're probably familiar with that. But that means I've made a change to my file. Now in the index.js, you can see, if you know JavaScript, You've got document.getElementById, and we're selecting the root ID in the HTML file. And that is where React injects our app, and that is the built-in component that comes with the setup project here from Create React App. So it gives us the first component, and this is the parent component for all the others. And it is injected into the HTML, and therefore all of the other JavaScript components will be injected as well when we build the project. And so we can look at that app.js file and we can see the little bit of source code in here. It looks a lot like HTML, but this is JSX and this is something we will cover more in detail in the future, but that's what is being returned by our app function and that is JSX we see right here in the return. Very similar to HTML, not quite the same thing. With that said, let's take a look at our project by running the script, the npm run. And we can do that by opening a terminal once again. You can go to the terminal menu and choose new terminal, or you can do what I do and press control and the tilde. At least I'm on Windows, and that opens up a terminal window as well. From here, I'm going to type npm start, and this will launch a local development browser should be at localhost port 3000, and we'll be able to view the initial project set up. And here we have the intro project. It has the React logo going in a rotation, and it just tells us edit source app.js and save to reload because this is a development server, so it will display our changes pretty much automatically. I'll pull this over to the right, and then we'll resize VS Code to the left. And I'll go ahead and close the terminal. And now we can make a change here in our app.js. I'll hide the file tree as well. It says edit source app.js code and save to reload. And say and save to see changes. And I'll go ahead and save the file. And now you can see in our file, it says, and save to see changes. So this will be very handy when we're working with React because we will see the changes from React automatically. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to stop the project as well. So back in the terminal, if you press Control C, that will stop the local development server. The app is still loaded in the browser, but now we won't see changes. Okay, in the next tutorial, we will start modifying this generalized app that we start out with and learn how to apply more changes to our own components in React. Hey, thank you guys so much for liking the video if it helped you get started with React. Also, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. It's helping my channel grow. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.